Okay, I'm going to um, going to be trying to do a little quick um, screencast here. Hopefully, the audio is okay. I've tried this uh, two or three times, and I haven't been too impressed with the sound quality. Uh, I tend to uh, found out that I tend to nose breathe a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I've kind of minimized that problem. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a quick example of a kind of a shiny glass type of uh, ball or globe. First thing I'll do is select this rectangle tool, click and drag the background color, and when you create something you generally get these um, grips to you know do things like you know round corners or things like this. Um, what I'm gonna do is um, I want to just move it and size the whole thing so I hit F1 which gives me the selection tool immediately. Um, it's pretty handy. Just hit F1. Um, now I want to change the color of this to the background color of my blog in case I want to post it and it looks a little nicer. I'll hit Control Shift F or go to the menus to bring up this fill and stroke dialog um, where I can modify the color of the selected object. And you can see just by clicking and dragging, I can change the color. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually just enter in manually the background color of my blog. Um, now I'm going to take uh, the circle tool and I'm going to create a circle. And if you just click and drag, you can create all kinds of uh, ovals and ellipses. Um, if you hold the control key while you're dragging, you'll get a circle. Okay? So you can, I want a, a nice round circle. That's what I'll do. I, again, hit F1 to select it. I'm going to change the color. Uh, first of all, to bright red, It'd be annoyingly bright. Um, put it up here where you can see it better. Make it a bit bigger. Position it where I want it. Now I want a duplicate of this circle. So what I'm going to do is hit Control D or go to the menu and say duplicate. For now, I'll just hit Control D. There's now a second object. I'm going to click it, move it off so you can see it. I'm going to make it uh, darker red, so I'm going to leave this where it is, but I'm just going to drag in the triangle a little bit darker, and I'm going to hit the radial gradient button to create a gradient. It's kind of opposite to what I want. What I want is um, darker red on the outside and then you know transparent on the inside. Um, this gradient, what I have to do to, to reverse it is just edit the gradient. So right now if I hit edit, it brings up the gradient editor. This gradient has two stops, a beginning stop and an end stop. And you can see the beginning stop is fully opaque, the center, and the second stop is fully transparent, which is the outside. I want a reverse of that, so I'm going to take the second stop, which is fully transparent. I'm just going to drag this over to be fully opaque. Select the first stop and make it fully transparent. Take that. Um, Close the gradient editor. I'm going to take this object. I'm going to hold Shift and click the second object. So now I've got them both selected, and I want to put this one over top of the bright one. Um, the easiest way to do it is hit Control Shift A to bring up the Align and Distribute dialog box, and I'm going to hit this button to center them on a vertical axis, which you can see they are now. And then when I click this button center them on a horizontal axis. So now one's directly over top of the other and that's what I want. Close this dialog. They're both selected. I'm moving them both around at the same time. There's still two objects there. Um, now what I'm going to do is, that's kind of got a sheen to it, but not really a shine. So I'm going to create another circle. Again, holding the control key. This time it's going to be smaller. Hit F1 to select it. And I'm going to change the color to white. I'm going to go up here, drag it, kind of position it top and center. And now what I'm going to do is click this gradient tool down here on the toolbar on the left. I'll click it, and then click at the top and drag, and you can see I can create a gradient. Nice opaque to transparent gradient immediately. 
and I can move that anywhere I want. If I hold control again while I drag, I can get a nice vertical gradient, or every 15 degrees, I believe. So, I don't know, maybe that looks good. Click off to see what it, uh, what it looks like. That's, that's reasonably good. Um, now to get fancy, I'm going to just do a quick and dirty shadow underneath. Uh, click the circle tool. This time I'm going to create an ellipse. Hit F1 to select it. Bring it underneath. Now you can use the alignment tool to make sure everything's lined up. I'm just not that fussy. Um, so once I've got it selected, I'm going to change the color to black by just dragging in here. And um, I'm going to click the radial gradient button. And there I kind of have my quick and dirty shadow. The nice thing about Inkscape is it's vector based, so um, you can zoom in on detail if you want. If I hit the plus or minus keys, I can zoom in. Um, I'll show you, you know, once you zoom right in, you don't lose any detail. Um, so you can see, uh, you can make some pretty fine tuned changes. Um, I'll zoom out again here so you can see the final, final product. That's it. And also, you know, you can export these objects or this shape uh, to virtually any resolution of a bitmap. So you can create a PNG file that's, you know, 100 by 100 or um, 1,000 by 1,000 or 2,000 by 2,000 and you'll get a, a nice sharp image every time. Um, and that's it. Hopefully the sound was bearable. Uh, hopefully it, it was of some use to, uh, to somebody. And uh, that's it.